dealing with authenticity. It's building that relationship. Building about the value. Because you want to make that impact. It can make you happy. Elevate others around Welcome us. to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your home for authentic, effective, and socially integrated sales strategies to help you master the art of selling. Join your co-hosts Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, along with some of the world's best sales thought leaders and practitioners, as we explore ways to help you grow your sales. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host Daryl Amy here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Another day in the Selling from the Heart podcast community. Hey, great to see you. Here we are, Daryl. We're knocking. We are literally knocking on the door of 2023. It is so hard to believe. I hope everyone listening in, if you're listening in during the holidays, happy holidays. If you got it after, I hope you had a fantastic time. We've got uh, such, uh, first of all, I just want to say massive gratitude and thankfulness to everybody in the Selling from the Heart community. Larry, it is, as we say often on the podcast, but I think right now is, is a time of just gratitude to say thank you to everybody who is out there in the Selling from the Heart community saying, yes, I'm a Selling from the Heart champion. This is how um, I sell. And it's so great Lord, to, to see this growing movement of authenticity in the sales profession. And it all started five and a half years ago with our very first podcast in 2017. Who would have thought five and a half years later, all this would have happened? Super grateful. Well, it's amazing. And we are knocking on the door (laughs) of 2023. Who would have thought? And that means it is time for the 2023 Authentic Selling Challenge. It's coming your way January 9th through 13th. And if you're listening to this, you want to stop and get your ticket right now. It's absolutely free, thanks to our our sponsors. But when you see the lineup of people that are going to be coaching us uh, during this challenge, you're going to want to be involved. Even if you can't come live and need to catch the recordings later, just go to AuthenticSellingChallenge.com, get your ticket. And by the way, if you're listening in and you go, it's past January, I'm behind on my episodes, don't panic. We were, we're going to record the whole thing. So go to 20, go to AuthenticSellingChallenge.com and get your ticket, get access. And, and we're going to kick the year off with a bang. We want 2023 to be the best year ever, a year of authentic selling success. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Oftentimes here at Selling from the Heart, we say that authenticity is a lifestyle, not a light switch. And this is our third annual already, Daryl. This, I mean... We just keep going, we keep going, and we keep going with this. We're going to bring you some great guests who are going to talk about why authenticity is so important and why that will elevate you as a sales professional in the sales space. Uh, It's going to be fun. AuthenticSellingChallenge.com. Get your free ticket. Share it with your friends, coworkers, and fellow peers in the sales uh, industry. We're going to have a great time. And uh, Larry, we got some more surprise gifts coming up in the new year. I can't wait to talk about. However, uh, today, when we talk about authenticity, when we talk about integrity, we talk about ethics, this is a great way uh, to end the year and kick off a new one, this conversation we're about to have. Oh, no, absolutely. One of my favorite sayings is this, is what's forever old is forever new. And the reason why I bring this up is the things that we're going to talk about on this podcast right now have stand, have stood, excuse me, have stood the test. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Larry, I, Larry's I, been I just, celebrating a little too much for the oh, holidays. It's Larry, they've stood the test American. of time. It's I got your back here. Time. You got my back. <laughs> hey, there's no rewinds on this one. But uh, right. hey, we got we to gotta welcome in our guest, Daryl. Yeah, Jonas Goldson, Goldson is here today. He is one of the foremost experts in the world on ethics, and it is such a pleasure to have you here in the Selling from the Heart studios. Jonas, and welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be with you. Ah, we're going to have a fun time today. This is going to be I, I, this is going to be challenging and inspirational. I could guarantee that. <laughs> and as we get started, though, you know the question that every guest in the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. And that is, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Well, because I'm a good Jewish but Jewish boy, I'm going to talk about my mother. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but expect nothing less. 
my mother, um, when she married my dad, she stopped working. She was well, stopped working in a job, was working in the home. She uh, she took uh, care of the house for uh, the next uh, twenty years until I went off to college, and then she was looking for something to do. So, with no sales experience ever in her life, she started selling timeshare. Now, whatever you may think of timeshare, <laughs> my mother thought timeshare was the greatest invention in the history of the world. She sincerely it. believed that. They owned several themselves. She was working. She became the number two salesperson in her organization working half time because she felt she was doing people such a favor by getting them to, to buy timeshare. It wasn't about her selling. It was about her serving. Mm -hmm. She genuinely felt this was something that was going to make your life better. And she didn't want you to miss out. And if that can be the way we sell, then you know, integrity, ethics, it's not even a question. We are serving the people that we are selling. And, you know, we, this, is a, this is a cliche in, in, in sales, but, you know, instead of pushing people into the sale, we're drawing them, we're pulling them into our value system so that mm. they can benefit. And that makes all the difference in the world. Oh, I love this. By the way, Kudos that you brought up your mom. Oftentimes I will use and I will integrate what I learned from my mom. It's, you know, a lot of times here at Selling From the Heart, we talk about authentic relationships. And in fact, quite often authentic relationships and meaningful value. I learned the relationship part of this because how I was raised by my mother and my father. So hats off to you for, for sharing that. I love it. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. And, and I... I think, you know, that what, that story you just shared is worth the price of admission here. Although this podcast is free, but <laughs> like thinking about it from the perspective, just see your mom so excited for people to own timeshare. And I think that level of, uh, of, in, I, I like to think about integrity as integration, right? You're integrated with who you are and what you're doing are very tightly, tightly integrated together that level of integrity, what a beautiful thing. I could just see this smile on her face um, as she is helping people to own their timeshare and, and selling that dream. What a, what a cool story. Yeah. So yeah. all of that brought you into the world of ethics and business. And you, you are, uh, uh, when you start to look at, at what you've done and what you're doing right now, I just want to say huge hats off. Um, you're a champion on a topic that we're very, very passionate about here at Selling from the Heart. But how does somebody uh, in their journey in life become an advocate and expert in the world of ethics? I'm really curious. <laughs> well, backstory takes a minute or two to tell, but you <laughs> just got me thinking that I, I, I heard a statistic. I, I might have heard this from Jonathan Hyde. I'm not sure. Um, but I heard that ethicists tend to be less ethical than average people. <laughs> I was getting nervous when people call me an ethicist. <laughs> and, and I think the problem is, and I think it goes, it goes to the heart of this discussion, that when something is purely intellectual, it doesn't necessarily reach the heart. Mm. The saying in Judaism that the longest distance from the universe is from the head to the heart. Mm -hmm. And that you can know something intellectually 100% and it can still have absolutely no impact on your behavior. And when we're selling, I don't, I don't see myself as someone who sells in a conventional sense. I like to sell ideas. I like to sell the value of ethics to the ROI of culture, of business. And really, that's what it's all about. It's taking concepts that we all know and internalizing them, helping others internalize them so that it actually leads to concrete action, which will then benefit us in our business relationships and our businesses. As far as my story goes, um, it's a little bit of a, a winding tale, <laughs> a long and winding road, if you will. 
I, uh, I graduated from the University of California with a degree in English. And what does one do with a degree in English? <laughs> did the natural thing. I went hitchhiking across the United States. <laughs> That must have been before Starbucks was invented. So that sounds way better yeah, than working it at was, Starbucks. It was a little late. It was it was the eighties, so it was a little late for, <laughs> for hitchhiking. Uh, probably not the wisest decision I ever made in my life. Um, <laughs> and after six months doing that, I crossed the Atlantic, went backpacking across Europe, and I was headed for Africa, Asia, and Australia. But along the way, I stopped off in Israel, and through a series of unlikely events, uh, I ended up in a rabbinic college. And as I say in my TED Talk, if you don't know what that is, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> but I was astonished to find this vibrant culture of deep thought, of higher purpose, of core values. And um, you know, I wasn't looking to change my life. I wasn't looking to become a religious fundamentalist. Um, but that's what happened. Uh, I just, I couldn't resist the pull of the culture and the value system, which was my legacy, even though I'd grown up with no knowledge whatsoever of what any of this was about. And so I ended up staying in Israel for nine years, uh, met my wife there, had her first two children, got my rabbinic ordina ordination, and then I set off on my career teaching uh, Jewish high school. I taught one year in Budapest, Hungary, uh, two years in Atlanta, Georgia, and 20 years in St. Louis, where I still live. And I retired from teaching in 2016. And what I wanted to do then is something I'd had a yearning for for a long time. I wanted to take the universal values of Judaism and present them in a context that would be meaningful to a professional audience. Hmm. And so when I started thinking about how to articulate these principles and these concepts in the language of business, what rose to the top was ethics. Because what is ethics? I like to think of ethics as the awareness, the recognition, and the commitment to living our lives in a way that our actions have an impact, a positive impact on those around us. Mm -hmm. And that means in both my private life and my public life, because what how I how you act in yep. private, that becomes your public behavior as well. And if we were more aware, more conscious, more committed to how we are making a positive impact on the world around us, we'd all be in a much better place. Uh, we we got to continue down this road because it, it's so here we are. We're talking about ethics. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about moral values in a world where when we look at this through the lens of most people, they will say there is no integrity. There are no ethics. Where are your morals when it comes to selling? We got to continue down the journey. Coach us through some more on, on unpacking this and why it's so important to bring this to the forefront, especially in the world that we live in today, which is so not trustworthy. Yeah, and, and so much of it has to do with simply reframing. Um, my, my last book is titled Grappling with the Gray, because when things are black and white, they're fairly straightforward, but most of life and life's challenges happen in the gray areas. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's prioritizing, it's choosing between good and better or bad and worse. And that can be really difficult and thorny sometimes. So one, one of the examples I use there is a study they did where if you, they found if you go into a, um, a wine shop, let's say, and they're playing German music, you're more likely to, to buy German wine. And if they're playing French music, you're more likely to buy French wine. So the, the and I mean, when it comes to, to branding, you know, it's the, the whole idea of anchoring, you've got, you've got an expensive bottle on this side and a cheap bottle on that side and the medium bottle in the middle <laughs> and the font they use and the, and the images and the colors. And, you know, it's, it's the science of manipulation mm. has gotten incredibly sophisticated. And of course, the real word for that is advertising or marketing, right? We're trying to manipulate people. So when does manipulation become something that's unsavory. 
it's when we're doing it to take advantage of people. It's kind of like going back to my mom. If I have a product that is going to serve you well, and I'm selling it at a fair price, then if I use tactics that make it easier for you to make that decision, then I'm serving you. But if I'm doing it to take advantage of you, it's an inferior product. It's something you don't need. It costs too much. And now I'm manipulating you? No. That's, that's what leaves a sour taste in our mouths and should. So really, what are we here for? You know, this, this, this phrase that's become so popular today, servant leader. And the problem with any cliche is that we use it so many times, it becomes meaningless. But that's what we really need to hang on to. Because ultimately, and of course, that goes all the way back to King Solomon. Because when King Solomon became king and God came to him and said, ask me for anything you want. He says, give your servant an understanding heart to lead your people. Mm -hmm. And boy, is that something that we would like to be able to find again in some of our leaders. And certainly should look for in our, in our, in our businesses. I love it. I love it. This is, you know, when you think about sales as a profession, and we cite this all the time on the Selling from the Heart podcast, they do surveys every year. I know what it's going to say in 2023, that salespeople are the second least trusted profession. We always edge in slightly ahead of politicians in the surveys. And, you know, I think when you, as a salesperson, we all know this, when we walk into a situation, especially a new relationship, there's a lot of guards that are up. And this is a, a, a challenge because I know everybody that's listening in on the Selling from the Heart podcast. This is an ethical audience. You don't hang out at Selling from the Heart and uh, there's not a whole lot of slime balls hanging out here at Selling from the Heart. They don't last very long. But we have a very ethical audience. But the, the challenge is, as a sales professional, you walk in by the very nature of the label on your business card. You know, you're walking in and the, the wall, the barriers are up, the trust you know, trust is at a real low, low point most of the time. Even if you've been introduced, there's still some hesitancy there. How, as salespeople, in from your experience, do we present ourselves in a way that establishes trust and establishes a level of of credibility and comfort? Well. You know, I'm, I'm someone who is averse to selling. <laughs> I don't like being sold, and so I don't like selling. And which was just, it's a challenge as a businessman. For <laughs> so sure, course, yeah. We, we have to sell ourselves. But I'll tell you about the biggest... Well, you'd like to sell from the heart. I, <laughs> well, I know selling that. from the heart, you'd be all in, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Yeah, no, I no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a wonderful title. Right. Because that's really what we want to do. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll tell you just about one of, uh, my, I guess, my favorite sale that I ever made was I noticed um, a woman on LinkedIn had been following me and had made a couple of comments. And, and I looked her up on her profile and I saw the business she was in. And it looked like something that um, I might like to uh, investigate. And so I messaged her and I said, you know, I see that you're in this business and I'd like to learn more about the industry. Could we set up a call? She said, absolutely. So had a nice conversation. She gave me some ideas. I never pitched her on anything. Now, two weeks later, she contacts me and says, would you want to be willing to do a lunch and learn from my office? I said, I'd be happy to. Truth is, I'd never done lunch and learn before. That job. it wasn't really in my uh, in my business <laughs> model. But sure, happy to do it. Um, I I think it was scheduled for nine in the morning. Finished at nine thirty. Ten thirty, I got another email. Would you be willing to do a training for our national hires? Now I never made. I never sold. I never made any effort to sell. I simply recognized someone with whom my message was resonating. I asked her for help. I developed a relationship and the opportunity simply fell into my lap. Now, 
we may not be able to count on that type of thing happening all the time. But I've heard you talk about the power of relationship. And that's, I mean, we've all gotten these LinkedIn messages where somebody says, hi, I'm selling this. Would you like to buy it? Well, no, not really. <laughs> no, <Yep. laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, but, but here, here's, here's what I love about that story is that can be replicated and replicated and replicated over and over and over again. It requires consistency. It's not just, you know, it's not just this happens automatically. It's just when you do that on an everyday occurrence. I'm just a big believer that, you know, nothing happens until you start a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's not a business conversation and it's not a sales conversation. It's a conversation. And I think a lot of times we miss that mark because as salespeople, we go into that conversation with a predetermined outcome already instead of just letting the conversation go where the conversation goes. But if you duplicate that on a daily basis, a lot, a lot of that, it just happens. It just continues to happen over time, but it's discipline and consistency. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. looking for the, it's looking for the, the, you know, the common value, the underlying value, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. whatever I'm selling. I mean, for right. me again, I'm selling, I'm selling ideas, I'm selling mm -hmm. concepts, right? But if it were a product, What's the underlying product? You know, the cliche we have from Simon Sinek now, find your why. What's the why mm -hmm. within what I'm doing? Because if that becomes the foundation of my conversation and my interaction, and that's where my passion really lies. And people pick up on passion. They, they can tell if we're really excited about what we're talking about, if we really believe in what we're saying. And when people feel that positive energy, that passion, that yeah. excitement, enthusiasm, they're drawn to it. They want to find out more. They want to interact with us because they it's infectious. And, and the likelihood that they are then going to look for an opportunity to let us serve them increases dramatically. I, I think that's so powerful. And it just reminds me of the subtitle of a book I once read uh, that says, How Your Authentic Self Sells You. <laughs> Subtitle of a book by Larry Levine, you might want to pick up. But, but you know, in and in, inside our community, we're big on the word why and discovering your why. And, and just a little plug for the Authentic Selling Challenge coming up in January, you're going to hear more about discovering your why, because when you show up, with a level of authenticity and, and as someone who knows who you are, what you're about, what your values are and all of that, there's a, a, a baseline, a, a foundation on which you can build trust. But I think a lot of salespeople um, tend to show up as, you know, what Larry calls empty suits, right? There's no, there's nothing in there, just a corporate robot. And so knowing, you know, if you're going to sell based on values, you know, I think you need to be clear on, on the val overall values. You also need to be clear on your own values and, and to be able to show up in an authentic way. And that, that's a critical point that gets overlooked. You hear a lot mm -hmm. of talk about living your values and, and, mm -hmm. and, and your core values. And how many of us actually can articulate our values? Yeah, there you go. There you go. And that's something that's really worth sitting down half an hour, an hour, maybe with someone with whom you resonate. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, um, I founded and co-founded an organization and we spent, I think, three or four significant sessions hashing out our five core values. Yes. And refining them. And, um, you know, it was, it was a really inspiring process because we all came away more conscious of what are those fundamental values that really drive us. Hmm. That's so powerful. I, we're huge fans of this at, at Selling from the Heart and all of our coaches are leading people through getting clarity on their values. Larry, this is, this is, I knew this was going to be so now, aligned with you, us. You know, and here, here, here's what I really, really love about this is when you understand your core values mm -hmm. and what you stand for, it's amazing because you can actually put those up onto a business table. I don't care if that's face to face or a virtual business table. And what will start to happen next is people will actually start sharing their values. 
And when you guys can start aligning around that, great conversations start happening. And as I'm listening, this is a great conversation. And, and I led this off in the beginning of the podcast that what's forever old is forever new. These were the things hundreds of years ago and centuries ago that people were talking about. But for some reason, somewhere down the road, a lot of us in sales and business have lost our ways on it. It's one of the lines that I, I use frequently is that the biggest mistake that leaders can make is believing they have to choose between being good and being successful. Ooh. Ooh. And, you know, yeah. there's so many examples. I mean, Enron is already old news, but, uh, you know, it was a, it was a business culture that was defined by dog eat dog. Yep. And they pitted their people against each other. And it worked for a while until it didn't. Right. And the whole structure collapsed. Yeah. Because it's not sustainable. I think you're absolutely right. And I think for every Enron or FTX is the latest headline right now in all of this, the, the question comes back. For every one of those, there's thousands of individuals um, who lost their way on, on all of this. Happens at the company level, but it happens in individual lives as well. And I think one of the things that's, that's so good about being in um, circles of people. And we're, this is what we're really working to create at Selling from the Heart. I believe we have created a culture where like-hearted sales professionals can get together and have conversations like this because you know this these type of collapses can happen at a corporate level, but they can also happen at an individual level. And um, you know we need good people around us because... One of the things that I wanted to ask, and as we're wrapping up here, I wanted to ask, how do you find your blind spots? Because I'm sure we all have blind yeah. spots when it comes to ethics. Um, and what, what, just a couple of quick tips on how to recognize your blind spots. Well, you actually just mentioned it. And I, I quote Jim Rohn all the time. Mm -hmm. You are Classic. the average of the five people you spend the mm -hmm. most time with. Uh, you know, that's a soundbite that we all need to review again uh -huh. and again. And of course, there, there are, you can find that back in, in, in Proverbs and in, in, in the Jewish uh, the rabbinic literature. Same concept. Um, you know, a, a good neighbor, a good friend. And the reason they're blind spots is because I can't see myself. <laughs> I, I can only see outward. It's much more difficult to look inward. Mm. And that's why we need trusted advisors. That's why the whole culture of groupthink is so dangerous. Because if we only surround ourselves with people who are going to reaffirm everything we've already decided is true, then we are, we are digging in, we're doubling down on those blind spots collectively and reinforcing them. Whereas if we seek out people who are different from us, and this is the real value of diversity, it's not just checking boxes, it's just not representing different groups, it's having different perspectives. Because when we all bring our subjective perspectives to the table, we all get closer to objective truth. Mm -hmm. Because we see from different angles. Others can see what we're missing. They have to be people with trust, we, they have to be people whose core values are similar to ours. And they have to be people who are willing to tell us what we might not want to hear and are willing to listen to what they might not want to hear because that's what creates a real safe space. Safe space. That's what creates mm -hmm. a culture of trust. And that's when real growth and real progress can happen. Oh, love it. That was great stuff. That love was it. good. Well, Yonason, what an amazing, amazing conversation, the work you're doing. I want to let you know we're cheering you on in this as you champion um, ethics and and trust. And uh, you're, you're, you're an honorary selling from the heart champion. We're, we're, uh, <laughs> we are new and growing fans. I'm curious for everybody listening in. And I know a lot of our audience is going, how do I get more Yonason in my life? I need to hear <laughs> from this guy. I need, I need a rabbi. I need to hear um, from somebody in these areas. How can, how can uh, people learn more and, and, uh, and get, uh, get some more of you in their life? I'll encourage anybody to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm very active there. And um, 
message me, contact me. Uh, I'll definitely respond. Um, also, look up my website, which is my name, Jonasson Goldson, Y-O-N-A-S-O-N, G-O-L-D-S-O-N.com. And if you go to jonassongoldson.com slash freebie, freebies, freebies, plural. We'll put it in the show notes. But... <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. If I can't spell it, how can they? Um, <laughs> but if you go there, um, I have some ebooks, a white paper, oh, an infographic. Uh, just request what you want, and I'll be happy to send it to you. Oh, what oh, an honor. Lovely. We're, uh, we're so appreciative of you sharing time with us. Uh, you are a true inspiration. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to be with you. All right, take awesome. care. Awesome. Oh. Larry, and wow. This is, a, this is a go back and go back and go back and rewatch and rewatch this one because, Daryl, I tell you, where trust sits in the sales world and, quite frankly, in the business world today, mm -hmm. everyone should go back and rewatch this. And especially what Jonasson just said in the last couple minutes of that podcast. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, and this is the time, you know, we're sitting here, um, right, knocking on the door of a new year. I can't think of a better time to, um, you know, get a cup of coffee or eggnog or whatever you're drinking um, as in and sit down by that nice roaring fire or for our friends in Australia on the beach, wherever you are <laughs> during the holidays. And just just take some time and reflect this this concept of getting clear on our core values I personally believe that we need to be reviewing these every day, but a great place to start right here on the doorstep of a new year is to really get clear on um, what are your values. And then I think to share those um, with some people that you're close to, because uh, that whole thing of you can't see yourself, uh, we need other people in our lives that are able to, to look in and, um, and, and help us out. That's, um, that's, I think, incredibly valuable. Yeah, you know, it, it, and I and I, I so love this is because when you download the self-reflection journal, when you decide to read Selling from the Heart, mm -hmm. and even if you've read it and you've done the journal, go back. Because in the first couple chapters, that's what we talk about. That's right. I ask you to put pen to paper and start reviewing and start coming up with your values and then share that with friends and family members, people close to you. Yeah. Well, and another great way we talked about it at the top of the show Authentic Selling Challenge is coming your way. Second week of January 9th through 13th. We're going to be live every day from 12 to 1 Eastern time. What's that? Nine o'clock out there on the West Coast, Larry. And you can do the math wherever you are in the world. If you can't come live every day, uh, don't worry. Get enrolled. We'll get you the recordings. But try to show up live as much as you can because we're, we've are we got an incredible uh, roster of coaches that are going to be coaching us Along the lines of the conversation today, being able to be authentic and show up authentically so that we can truly serve our prospects and clients, and truly sell from the heart. I'm so looking forward to this. Larry, um, what an amazing year. Massive, massive thank you to everybody in the Selling from the Heart community all around the world, this growing movement of authenticity in the sales profession. So grateful, Larry. Yeah, it in you know, like attracts like, mm -hmm. right? As simple as that sounds, it's yet so difficult for a lot of people to truly understand what we're building here is a movement around heart about bringing your best self forward. We call it giving a rip and the growth every single day that's occurring is just amazing. More people are standing up and saying, yes, it's so exciting. Well, make sure to get your ticket January 9th through 13th, Authentic Selling Challenge. We've got some exciting new things coming up here in the Selling from the Heart world. So make sure to like or subscribe. And until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep adding real value, get clear on your values, and most of all, sell from the heart.